Hey, hey, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Shanae and I'm so excited today because I'm finally going to show you how to make French macarons. It's one of my favorite pastries to bake. I've been baking macarons for about seven years now and I've accumulated so many tips and tricks to get this beautiful full macarons with crispy smooth shells on top. And I'm going to share all those tips with you today. Not only good proven recipe, but also uh, awesome tips. So let's get started. So before we get started, I wanna mention a couple of important things. In order to achieve perfect macarons, we need four main areas that we need to pay main attention to. First of all, precise amount of ingredients. Second, quality stable meringue. We're going to make with French meringue today and I'm going to show my secrets to achieve perfectly stable French meringue, almost identical to Italian meringue, which is um, known for its stability. And I can show you how to achieve that stable French meringue with my couple of secrets. So stick around. And three, important is macaronage technique, mixing the dry ingredients with the meringue. It's another main uh, area that you need to pay attention to to achieve perfect macarons. And then lastly, oven temperature. So most recipes for macarons are pretty much the same. And I would advise you to stick with one recipe and test it with your oven because every oven is different and you have to work on your oven temperature. You might tweak, um, your temperatures up and down a little bit and bake a little longer or a little less and play around. And instead of jumping from recipe to recipe, stick with one recipe and uh, make sure you get your oven temperature just right. And then if you pay attention to these four areas, you're going to have perfect macarons. Maybe not the, from the first try, but from the second, third, I can guarantee you. So. First thing first, we're gonna start with the dry ingredients. Like I said, the precise amount of ingredients, it's super important. And that's why I highly, highly recommend getting a scale. Like if you like to bake, it's a good investment to get. And it doesn't have to be expensive. I've been using $30 uh, scale for many years and I just upgraded to this OXO scale, which I love. And so. We're gonna start with um, weighing the dry ingredients. We need 100 grams of almond flour. I will talk about the ingredients in another video, but we're gonna need 100 grams of almond flour. You wanna have beautiful, fine ground almond flour. 100 grams of almond flour, we're going to zero it out and then and add powdered sugar. We need 75 grams of powdered sugar. So I have 100 grams of almond flour and 75 grams of powdered sugar. And I like to use this sifter. You can also use this kind of sifter, but I find this a little too fine and it takes a while to sift. So this sifting part is my least favorite part of making macarons, so I like my um, job easier and I use this sifter. Sifting the dry ingredients is important because there are two reasons. One, we want to combine the dry ingredients and second, we want to aerate the dry ingredients so that it has lots of air in it. If you have um, this big lumps, you can just break it apart lightly with a spoon. Okay, so what we'll do is go ahead and sift it again. Again, we're going to sift it three times just to aerate the mixture and combine them well. Once you sift it twice, I just like to transfer it into the sifter and then we'll sift into, directly into the meringue. Okay, I'm gonna set it aside and we'll work on the meringue. To get started with egg whites, I'm going to show you how I break the egg whites. There are so many different methods, but I like just straightforward into the bowl, but 
I also always break it one egg at a time because you don't want any egg yolk in your egg whites. So be very, very careful. Here's how I do it. So I just tap it in the counter and carefully let the egg whites run. And then I transfer the egg yolk between them and get the egg white. You can use the egg yolk for egg yolk cookies on my website, or you can make pie crust. And here's a tip for you. It's easier to break the eggs when they're cold. That way, there is a less chance to break the egg yolk. You want egg whites to be about 65 to 70 grams of egg whites, no more than 70 grams and no less than 65 grams. And another tip here is we're gonna whip the mer meringue on a steady speed. We're not gonna jump from low speed to medium to high. No, we're, I find out that if you whip the egg whites slow and steady, it creates a really, really nice stable meringue. I usually do it on the speed number two on my KitchenAid mixer. And then we're gonna whip it until it's nice and foamy, and I will show you the next stage. So the egg whites are nice and foamy, and at this stage we're gonna add quarter teaspoon of salt and quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. Cream of tartar is not essential ingredient, but it helps to create stable meringue. And if you don't have it, you can omit it, but again, if you wanna create really nice stable meringue, add it. So now we're gonna continue on mixing on speed number two. and I'll start adding sugar one teaspoon at a time. You don't wanna add the sugar too fast, otherwise the sugar won't get melted and it won't create stable meringue. You want really beautiful stable meringue, you have to add a tablespoon at a time and slowly. This process takes about solid 10 minutes because we're going slow and slow for stable meringue. Okay, so now it's been eight minutes. We are almost there, close, very, very close. It's almost hard peaks. As you can see, the peak is standing up, right? Which is almost there, but don't be fooled by the pointy peak because it's not quite there yet. We want to mix it a little bit longer so that the meringue is balls up in the middle of the whisk. But this is the great time to add food coloring. Like I suggest adding um, gel food coloring, not liquid, and then uh, continue mixing for about two minutes. And I'll show you what sign to look for, so. So it's been about 12 minutes and we're almost there. I wanna show you a couple of signs that we are looking for. See these ridges? These are kind of um, rounded edges and we want them sharp. Like we wanna see sharp, sharp edges. You, you can see it here for a little bit. We want more of these sharp edges all around. So we'll continue beating for a couple more minutes. So the meringue is exactly how we want them. As you can see, it was balling up in the middle of the whisk, really good. And I'm going to show you the edge. This ridges are super sharp. This is a good sign that your meringue is, has a perfectly stiff peaks. This is exactly what you want to see, these sharp ridges. Now, the meringue is ready. We're gonna prepare the piping bag. Um, I'm using Wilton 2A tip and I'm putting it in a piping bag, twist it a little bit and put it in a tall glass, which is really easy to fill it. Just like so. It will be easy to fill it with a macaron batter. Set it aside and we're gonna do the macaronage, which is the most important part of the making macarons, we're going to add 
the dry ingredients into the meringue. So we're going to sift the dry ingredients into the batter again. I add all of the dry ingredients all at once. I know a lot of recipes um, advise you to add it in batches, but I don't see them necessary. There you go. Now we're going to start the macronage process, which is again, one of the most important techniques in the making macarons. You don't wanna uh, mix it too much or too little you want the batter just right. And I'm going to show you what is the right consistency is. We'll start with uh, gentle motions just to incorporate the dry ingredients into the meringue in this kind of motion up around the bowl in the middle. And then once all the dry ingredients are incorporated, we'll go ahead and mix until the perfect consistency. We'll continue folding up around the bowl and right in the, cut into the batter in circular motion like so. It's still too thick. You want this dropping into continuous ribbon. When I started baking macarons, I used to count them and I usually used to cut, count about 50 to 60 um, folds like this. We're almost there now. Did you see that? How it fall into a ribbon like this? Some people say you want, you should be able to draw a figure eight. I can do it now, but I feel like it's still a little too thick because the edges are still staying in. We wanted to spread a little bit more. We're almost there though. Okay, this is almost ready. You want this running and just like that. Okay, I'm going to transfer it into my pastry bag and then we'll start piping this macaron shells. So let's talk about baking um, sheets and the baking mats. I do not like uh, thick, regular silpat silicone mats. I like this thin silicone mat, which is um, better than the regular ones, or ideally you wanna do Teflon sheets or parchment paper. Parchment paper is my favorite, but um, they do to wrinkle a little bit, so that's why I like Teflon. Now, we'll go ahead and shape the macarons. I mostly don't use any template because I'm so used to it but if it helps you you can put this under your parchment paper and use it as a guide and then this is the reason why we want to twist this end so that it doesn't run out as you um, pull out the piping bag here's a very important tip for you when you're piping the batter you want to hold your piping bag at 90 degrees and then only squeeze the batter from the top and use this hand for guiding only. Try to pipe with equal pressure so your macarons are even. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, now the fun parts. We're going to tap, tap, tap to get rid of all the air bubbles in the shells. If you don't do this, the air bubbles in the shells may erupt and you will get cracked macarons. Sometimes you might need to use a toothpick to pop a larger air bubble like this and then kinda do this motion to fill in the gap. Now we're going to rest the shells for about 15 to 30 minutes. In humid areas, they might even take up to two hours. What we're gonna do is we're trying to form a skin over the shells. 
before baking. That's how you will get that beautiful ruffled feet. Okay, so the skin had formed, so when you touch it, it doesn't stick to your finger. This is the skin formed, and then now it's ready to bake. So it's time, beautiful feet. So my macarons are cooled and I'm going to pair them now, which means basically we're going to match them up by their size. No matter how good your piping skills are, some macarons are gonna be a little bit different sizes. So that's why we pair them by the same size, like so. This one is a little bigger. This matches better. And then we'll be ready to fill them. Okay, this fits better. This fits better. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll flip one side of each macaron upside down so that we can put filling on the on this side and then we'll place the the top of the macaron and I'm gonna bring the filling and fill it. I like to pipe two different ways. One is like go all around the edges like so. I like this method better because it looks perfectly even. Another method I um, you can do is pipe it from the center into a big blob like so. Make sure not to squeeze all, all the way up until the edges, otherwise it will run out of the sides. I'm filling these macarons with my apple caramel filling right now, and you can find the recipe on my website. I will link it down below. And there you have it, perfect macarons. Beautiful smooth shells, ruffled feet, and perfect filling. Pay attention to the thickness of your filling. It should be the thickness of one shell. Perfect, I'm going to bite into one. Mm -hmm. Perfectly full inside. This is exactly how you want it. Once you fill the macarons, place them in an airtight container and refrigerate for at least eight hours or preferably for 24 hours. This process is called maturing, which allows the filling to soften and flavor the shells. Once matured, the filled macarons can be frozen for up to one month, depending on the filling. While I don't believe in foolproof macaron recipe, I can tell you that my recipe has been tested by me and many of my readers with great success over the years. And I can't wait for you to try it as well. If you try it, please share on your Instagram and tag me so I can see your macaron success. Thank you.